In this video, we will go through the features of the Application Configuration Tool. This tool is used for creating and editing relay logic. To open this tool, you need to right-click on the relay and choose Application Configuration. If you use Standard Configuration, or the configuration is already being read from the relay, you have some logic in form of function blocks and variables divided into several tabs called Main Application. If you don't have any logic, you will only see one main application with no elements on it. In this video, we will only cover application configuration tool interface elements and explain how to use different features, but we will not cover application aspects. First, let's do the interface overview. Usually, on the left-hand side, you have the Object Types window from where you can drag and drop elements to the main application. If this window is not visible, you can click on an object type icon to enable it. Now let's add some logic and learn how we can utilize different tools in the Application Configuration tool. Let's create a new main application. Having several main applications is not mandatory, but it makes configuration clearer. To insert a new main application, we need to click Insert Main Application or choose it from the Insert Context menu. You can edit its name in the Object Properties window. If this window is hidden, you can click on the respective icon to show it. To change the name, click on the Main Application icon tab and change the name in the Properties. You can insert the new function block in several ways. Drag and drop an element from the object types, or right-click on the empty space and insert a function block. All function blocks are divided into several categories, and you can choose the one needed from that category. If you don't know to which category this function block belongs, you can select All and see all available function blocks. You can notice that some function blocks are gray, and some are not. If the name of the function block is gray, it means that it is already used in the configuration, and most function blocks can't be used twice in the same application. Let's grab one function and make some logic. When you insert the function block, you can change the name or leave it as default. If you change the name, the user-defined name will be shown on the top of the function block. In this case, we've changed the name and our name is shown on the top in addition to the default function block name. You can always change the name afterwards by right-clicking on the function block and selecting Set User Defined Name. This name is shown only on the PCM600 interface, but not on the Relay Local menu. Let's add the variable to the configuration. Variables are used to transfer signals from one function, or binary input, to another function, or binary output. To create the new variable, you need to right-click on the output and select Connect, then New Variable. You can type the name you want or leave it at the default one. Now let's close the windows we do not need to use during the Application Configuration task. You can always enable them by clicking the respective icon. So for now, I will close Project Explorer and Object Properties. If you want to open them again, you need to choose the respective icon. Let's create another variable in the same way. Next, let's learn how to insert binary input. You can take it from Object Properties in the Hardware Inputs category and drag and drop the binary input element. When it has been inserted, you need to choose the hardware module and hardware channel. Every relay has a different number of binary inputs divided into different modules. To take the correct one, you need to know the purpose of the binary input and you can learn it from the connection diagram or from the project specification. I will take some binary input. To connect the binary input to the function, you can draw the line. To draw the line, you need to place the cursor over the binary input dot so that the cursor turns into a hand, and you need to left-click and keep it held down. Then you need to move the line to the destination and let go of the mouse. Now the function block turns green. It means that this function block is connected to another element. A function block may be one of three colors. It may be gray when it's not connected to another element like this one. Not all function blocks need to be connected in the configuration. 
They just have to exist in the configuration. A function block may also be green when it is connected to another element in the configuration, or it may be yellow when it's connected to some other element, but not all mandatory inputs are connected. Inputs which must be connected are marked with a red triangle. Now let's connect the variables we have just created to the existing logic. To connect variables, you need to right-click on the place where you want to connect it. Select Connect and choose Existing Variable. You can select it from the list or you can use the search function. Then you need to double-click on the variable you want to connect. You can connect the same variable to different places. For example, to the trip logic like we just did with the disturbance recorder. If you're analyzing a configuration and you want to understand where a particular variable is coming from, you can use the Go to the Pardoner function. Right-click on the variable, select Go to the Pardoner, and you will see the source of the signal. You can also use Find and Replace option. You can type the name you are searching for and see all of the elements with the chosen name. You can also specify the type of element in the options. For example, if you want to find a function block with that name, we can select a function block from the search type and the application configuration will show the function block with this name. Now let's insert the binary output into the configuration. To insert it, you need to choose Binary Output from the Hardware Inputs Output section in Object Properties and drag and drop it to the configuration. Then you need to select the hardware module and hardware channel and click OK. Every binary output can be used only once in the configuration and if you need to connect several signals to the same binary output, you need to use the OR function block to connect variables through it. There are three types of binary output, high-speed outputs or HSO, power outputs or PO, and Signal Outputs, or SO. If you want to undo or redo any action in the configuration, you can use the respective icons in the top menu. To save the configuration, you need to click the Save icon and close the tool. To apply the changes on the relay, you need to right-click on the relay and choose Write to IED. Confirm and wait until you see the success comment. When you have the same configuration on the relay and PCM600 and your computer is connected to the relay, you can use the Work Online function in the Application Configuration tool. To enable the Work Online mode, you need to open the Application Configuration tool and click on the Work Online icon. When this mode is active, you can see the online statuses of signals. When a line is blue, it means that the signal is not active or is false. If this line is red, it means that this signal is active or true. When you navigate the configuration in online mode, you may wait several seconds to see the updates of statuses. To disable this mode, you need to click on the icon and work offline. You can't make changes in the configuration when the online mode is enabled. If you want to have names of the function blocks be shown with IEC and ANSI modes, you can change this in Tools, then Options, and go to the Language Settings and change the naming styles to Function Type plus ANSI plus IEC and confirm it. So, if you make these changes, you will see that all elements are shown with an IEC 61850 name plus an ANSI name plus the IEC symbol. It's also shown in the Application Configuration tool. This is all for this video. Thank you for watching.